Welcome back to sunny Naples, Florida. I'm Adam Bazalgette, two-time PGA Teacher of the Year Award winner, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. Today's subject, how to hit a flop shot in golf. Fun shots. Let's check it out. So how to hit a flop shot in golf. It's a spectacular shot. We've all seen Mickelson and some of the other guys on TV hit these beautiful stroke saving shots, but a lot of times it can cost you shots. And we'll get into a little bit of some of the pitfalls and what to watch out for is here as we go. There's two kinds of flop shot really, or at least in my mind. One is off a more tight fairway lie. That's a more challenging shot. That's the one we're gonna do today. And the other is when you're in a bit more of the rough grass around the green, you've kind of got to chop it up out of there. A little bit different shot. We'll cover that back at Scratch Golf Academy. Let's look at the tight lie shot today. Hopefully we can give you some helpful insights. So this would be a good example of where you might want to use a flop shot. I could run up the bank, but it's a very steep bank. I'd rather drop it on the green up there and hopefully if I get enough height, stop it on the green as we go. Now, as I say, I've got a reasonably tight lie here. It's not a, it's a good lie, but there's not a lot of cushion under it. So the shot is a little bit more challenging. First consideration is club choice. Hey, if you have a lot of these types of shots, you'd want to have something like a 60 degree sandwich if you had. I have a 58. I think sometimes if you get into two lofted clubs like 64s and things like that, they can be a little difficult to hit solidly, number one. Uh, and also they're not very versatile. You can't hit them very far. So decide for yourself. But if you get a lot of shots like this around the golf course where you play, you definitely want something in the 56, 58 to 60 range, if not a little bit more. So let's have a go here. Add some loft in there. I was able to pop that up reasonably well. Couldn't get as much height as I wanted off that tight lie, but it was a pretty effective shot. So I'm gonna show you a few of the pitfalls, a few of the downsides of this shot as we go through, but let's begin with what the most important thing is, and that is you've gotta get solid contact. Let's have a close up look. So solid contact. I've accentuated the sweet spot of this club with a black dot. You could hit a little bit on the bottom edge of that, but you wouldn't want to go all the way to the bottom edge of the club. Now, this is a great lie, but it's fairly firm. So you just have to use your initiative and your mind as to what does it take to get sweet spot or at least low side of sweet spot contact. Now, there's two ways to add loft. You can either open the club face up, that adds loft, and or you can tilt the shaft back a little bit, which also adds loft or perhaps a little bit of a combo but you've got to look down there and say, hey, given the situation, can I skid that club under there and get the ball on the club face? You know as much as I do now at this point. You can look down there and use your mind a little bit and figure out what to do. This is a pretty tight lie. I'd be somewhat careful with this. And there's some nuances here. You get just a little bit more cushion there, just another day's growth or a little softer. It can really change the dynamic of how much loft you could use and still get under the club. So you've got to feel it out a little bit. This would be at best a yellow light situation. One other point that's very important, it is a fallacy to think that hitting down at the ball, let me get that fly off there, is a fallacy to think that hitting down at the ball makes it go up in the air. It doesn't. It makes it go lower, if anything. It can have the effect of hitting the sweet spot on the ball so remember, if you want to use the effective loft, you want more of a skid mark under the ball in this fashion, a nice brush mark, and that will probably involve clipping the tops of the grass as you come in and skidding through the ball. I'm not talking about hitting it fat, but you will allow for yourself, as I did here, to skid across the grass and go through there. That is what allows you to keep the true loft of the club. So now that we have a sense of adding loft and what's required at contact given the lie we have, this is a fairly tight lie I have here. Let's look at a couple of things you have to do. Well, another feature of solid contact is when you get down to impact, you cannot have a lot of action or activity down here. Your golf club has to be pretty stable and pretty firm as it goes through there, or you're going to have some problems with it. So if you like, you can certainly, and let me just add to that, that doesn't mean you have to be rigid. This doesn't have anything like the speed of a fairway wood or something. I'm only hitting this ball 15 yards or so. So I can be relaxed, but I still have to feel firm and stable at the very bottom as I get that club underneath the ball. Now, one little thought here as well, and then we'll look at the shot. You can actually, as I showed you, have your hands fractionally back and a little loft on the face. But if you do that, don't make the mistake of tilting back like so many people do. It just feels like you're going to get more loft. And theoretically, you would if you could hit it solidly. You'll get a lot of miss hits if you get like that. So I'm going to make sure my body center is up to the golf ball. That ensures that my brush mark is going to be relatively up there. And then, okay, if I add a little loft, that's fine. 
But as long as I'm forward and as long as I've got control of the shaft, I'm likely going to hit it reasonably solidly. So just looking in slow motion, you can see my hands are back, club face is laid open. I haven't tilted too much back with the slope though, though. And as I go back, I've chosen not to cock my wrists a lot in this particular shot because with the tightness of lie, I want a nice shallow part at the bottom of the swing. I don't need that much club head speed from this distance, so I'm not using a lot of wrist cock. Wrist cock really only adds club head speed. It doesn't have a magic property to add height. And here I come, and again, without being too stiff, I'm keeping the shaft stable, and I'm just letting it slide off the ground and slip under the ball there. And through we go, and just a nice graze mark, and it pops right up off the club face. Okay, just a passing thought on alignment here. If you open the club face a lot, which is adding loft, does that mean the ball's gonna go way to the right and you've now gotta aim way to the left to offset that? Not as much as you probably think. Any, the principle's this, anytime you hit nearer the bottom of the ball, the ball doesn't tilt or curve as much. An open sand wedge slid under the ball won't put the ball much offline even with an open face. A driver with a face that open hitting near the equator would hit it miles to the right. So find out for yourself, experiment, but I think what you'll find is that if you truly hit underneath the ball as you're supposed to, you can open the face a fair amount and you'll only have to modify your alignment to the left a modest amount to get the proper direction out of it. So what are the downsides to this shot? Well, let me show you. This is an easy one to demonstrate, by the way. This is about the swing speed I had to hit that shot. If I hit that ball thin, I hit that a little bit thin there, that thing's gone. I bet that ball went three times the length of the shot I'm anticipating. And the reason is, with the expectation of sliding under the ball there and, and launching it in the air, when you hit it with the front edge, you directly compress that ball and you're using so much speed here relative to the distance you have that if you compress it like I did, I even topped it a little bit, it's going to go, believe me. So the downside is it's double bogey or worse when you do that. So what you have to manage is you have to take into account your skill sets. You have to take into account the lie. That's not a particularly good lie for this shot. And also, to some extent, you have to take into account the situation in the match. I mean, if you're in a scramble and you're the fourth guy up, what the heck, if someone's already on the green, give it a try. But if it's a stroke play event, you're a little bit nervous, you might just want to bump that up the hill or play for a 15, 20 foot comeback putt and not use as much loft through impact. So balance out the lie and your skill sets. And I can tell you, anytime you try a shot that you're really not that confident in and that you know the downside of it's going to be pretty significant, you're going to feel some anxiety. And it's a known fact that the chemicals the brain produces throughout the body when there's fear and anxiety are not good for managing golf shots and for motor skills and those sort of things. So just be judicious when you use it. And remember, you can always build skill. Hey, practice it. Get good at it. These principles are fairly simple. And then you'll be able to use it a lot more and in a lot more different situations with a good level of confidence. Well, thanks as always for your time. I hope that helps you with how to hit a flop shot in golf. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. We'd love to get you more free content. ScratchGolfAcademy.com is my website. We'll be offering full courses in every aspect of the game there soon. Thanks.